All right, thanks for staying with us. Uh, every day you wake up and every night that you go to bed, there are a couple of organs in your body that deserve devotion, appreciation, respect, and admiration, if you say. Wow. <laughs> Usually, most people believe the liver is the all-important organ that gives assurance of existence, but one of such organs that deserves devotion is the kidney. I wonder what kind of devotion we're talking about here. Well, giving attention to. Okay. Yeah, this is not the Bible. <laughs> well, you may have an active brain, keen eyesight, sensitive hearing, a strong stomach, and your heart may be beating strongly. Mm. But if the kidneys are not functioning optimally, then there's a big trouble. Yes, indeed. Now, for clarity of this subject, let's take this report to lay foundation for the discussion. The help in the head of the public to take about 12 million naira. The transplant going to India, the treatment and the drugs. I, I doubt very much if that um, footage actually gives you a, 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 a true appreciation of kidney failure in, in Nigeria. Well, we're joined by a kidney specialist, uh, Dr. Falashade uh, Shoinka. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for joining us. Good morning. It's nice to have you. Thank you. Well, the, the, other, the other name for kidney, kidney specialist is nephrologist. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, the big name. That's a big name. <laughs> All right, okay. I think let's, let's play the, the, the real footage for mm -hmm. people to have the understanding of what we're talking about. Gertrude has a plastic tube placed through her skin that is secured with a stitch. The tube is connected to a dialysis machine three times every week to remove the poisons and fluid that the kidneys cannot get rid of. Gertrude says before her kidneys failed last year, she has been suffering from hypertension and diabetes for 15 years. I've been managing diabetes and hypertension for the past 15 years. And um, last year, it degenerated into kidney failure. From there, I've been on dialysis for the past four months. I started with three, three weekly, weekly dialysis. Costing then, you how much? That cost me about 45 to 50 for every each week, one, every each, week. Each session? Each, each session. So a week costs about 100, including the treatment, the injections, drugs, and um, the, there are some blood shots I take also. So it costs about 100 a week. So for a month, it costs me 400,000. And I've been doing that since August. I've, I've expended about two point something million. I need the help in the head of the public to take about 12 million naira. The transplant going to India, the treatment and the drugs. Hmm. And uh, diabetes and high blood pressure is only one of the many uh, predisposing factors to kidney to or kidney. renal And, and, they, and they, these are cases on daily basis you hear of people have these things on daily basis yes it and the figures very, very are quite alarming about 17,000 kidney failure cases reported every year and I, it's I'm actually almost, on the I'm rise I'm thinking it's even more okay in the past it used to be just seven percent of our admissions for medical problems but now we see 12 to 18 percent wow. so and I tell you that's a lot when I say practice about 12 13 years ago mm. we'll see in the, in the kidney clinic four or five new patients. But now, on a daily basis, you get to see eight to 15 new patients. Now I tell you, these are patients that can't even afford uh, the care. As we watched, mm -hmm. average costs 35, 50,000 for, one, one, for one session. Most people will do three sessions, get medications for their hypertension and diabetes, get medications to build their blood. Because one of the things the kidney mm. do is that the help with blood formation. It makes a particular chemical called erythropoietin. So when the kidneys fail, doesn't mind that business, mm -hmm. and then the erythropoietin drops. And the person needs blood shots, blood transfusions, and so many other things. Wow. Mm. Okay, make oh. us understand, uh, kidney is, uh, 
Renal failure is the same thing as kidney failure, right? Yes. Renal is the medical word for word kidney. For, for kidney. For it. And of course, most people, if not all, are born with two kidneys. Most people are born with two kidneys, but mm -hmm. the truth is that if there is one functioning kidney, mm -hmm. then the patient is as good as good. The person is as good as good. And the native kidneys, if they're working effectively, you have as much as eight, uh, up to 20% function, the person may not even know. Wow. So the failure, it's really a, a marked reduction, a marked decline in the function. So whether it's two or one maximally functional one, mm. there is no problem. Mm. Okay, oh, well. Let, let's get to my yes. wall and then mm. um, I give you a, a basic understanding yes. of what we are talking about in here. Wow. Kidney, kidney, kidney. Mm. Okay. Now, the rising prevalence of renal failure, kidney failure, if you may put it that way, is a global public health challenge in developing countries, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Ashoinka why in Sub-Saharan Africa, but let's, let's get on now. It is a medical condition that affects the kidney, especially when it fails to adequately filter metabolic waste from the body. Now, this is just to give you a yes, picture. Yes, if you look at of, those two kidneys, you can tell that one looks one, in good one condition. One has, one the has... One, uh, Yes, there's obviously something going wrong uh, there. issue here. Then this, this one looks kind of healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is how they are. This is just the graphic representation of that. I think, hope my back is working. Okay. Now, the people do not understand when one says renal failure, but easily understood or understand when you say kidney failure. That's what I was asking Dr. Shoenka earlier on. Kidney and renal are the same thing, but renal is just a medical name for mm -hmm. kidney. Let's get on here. Okay. Now, humans are usually born with two kidneys. They're located just above the waist in the back, somewhere around here. Am I right, Doctor? Yeah, yes. Ah, fine. So, <laughs> somewhere, just somewhere around here, True. behind. And uh, they're partially protected by the ribs. Uh, one kidney is on each side of the spine. After the body breaks down food and water, it produces waste. And it is the job of the kidneys to get rid of those wastes. And the kidneys send toxins to the bladder and then the body later removes toxins during urination. Now each kidney has about a million tiny filters that perform this uh, function. Let's get into... Uh, right. Now kidney failure occurs when the kidneys lose their ability to filter waste from your blood sufficiently, which is primary function. Now, uh, this is just a representation. When you talk about filter, everybody is very conversant with the regular filtering water mm -hmm. but literally so this, this is case, what the kidney does. In this does. case we say then that, the, that this particular filter mm -hmm. is the kidney. It, this is the kidney. So this is, this is the waste, okay. uh, but certainly it has to be able to That's get a good rid. analogy. You want yeah. to weigh in on Very that? Very good analogy. <laughs> uh, but unlike the waste that you can take, uh, the filter you can remove from time to time, mm. continually on a 24 hour basis the kidneys are functioning. Mm. And the truth is that some may escape. But nature has a way of keeping it intact. Okay. So it's actually a filter. One of the things it filters is protein. And I think I like to say this. Okay. Uh, when the, it cannot filter protein well, and protein begins to show on the other side, okay. the patient begins to leak protein and has and foaming urine. That's a ah. very early marker of kidney disease. Oh. Foaming. So when foaming, foaming urine, urine is, is a problem, right? Yes, it is. Whoa. Ah. Okay. When oh. people say, they say, oh, protein, protein, let me reduce my protein. But a good analogy I like to give is, when you see a woman weeping by the wayside with a lot of water from her eyes, mm. you don't say she has drank too much water. It means there's a stressor somewhere. So one of the kidneys, the ways the kidneys shows that they are ill is by leaking protein. Whoa. Okay, it will be okay. interesting to uh, have you tell us more about yeah, the very we, we early need to signs. understand more of this, the early signs of yes. the early symptoms of this. Okay, let's get on. Uh, yeah, we'll finish the filter uh, uh, analogy. Now, there are two forms of kidney failure. We have the acute and the chronic. Now, acute renal failure is usually caused by an event that leads to kidney malfunction, such as dehydration, uh, blood loss from major surgery or injury, or the use of medicines. Mm. Now getting on, uh, chronic kidney disease is usually caused by a long-term disease such as high blood pressure or diabetes that slowly damages the kidneys and reduces their uh, function over time. Now there is no known cure for chronic kidney disease, although treatment can slow or halt the progression of the, kid of the disease and can prevent other serious conditions uh, developing. Dr. Shurika will tell us more about that as we get mm -hmm. along. But however, 
A kidney failure is the last, most severe stage of uh, chronic uh, kidney disease, and it is also called end-stage renal disease. Some common symptoms of kidney failure include muscle cramps, nausea and vomiting, swelling in feet and ankles, too much urine or, or not enough urine, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nosebleeds and rash. Now they, they can manifest in different forms in mm. different people uh, from what we read, but the doctor is here, will give us all yeah. of that as we get along. Now, in the early stages of kidney disease, a proper diet and medications may help keep the kidneys normal. But when kidney failure occurs, possible treatment, which is the man management of the condition, could be in the form of dialysis. Now, dialysis removes waste and excess fluid from the blood. We, we played a report earlier, uh, earlier on and mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Shoninka will still give us an elaboration of how dialysis takes place. Now, it can be done either by machine or by using fluid in your abdomen. Another way to restore normal kidney function is through a kidney transplant combined with medication and a healthy diet, but it is not without its own risks. Okay, and those risks, of course, um, Dr. Shoinka will tell us about uh, this morning. Now, let's even talk about, first of the other um, early symptoms that one should uh, be concerned about. And are there genetic factors? If your father had kidney failure, for example, should you have any concerns that... Uh, you might be a victim somewhere down the line. Thank you. Kidney failure is a stage disease from stage one to mm. stage five. But most times the stage five is when we get to see it, just like the tip of the iceberg. Mm. The one under is far larger than that. Um, the early symptoms are things like the foaming urine, mm -hmm. um, excessive urine in the night. For instance, the what kidney... What would be excessive? Okay. Normally, most people will pass when you go to bed. Mm -hmm. The reason for waking up, if to pass urine, mm -hmm. should not be more than once or twice. Okay. So if you see a, a person who is going three, four, five, seven, eight times, well, and there is something wrong, on. the kidneys should be resting. They're under pressure. They are working. What, what in the case where one sleeps under air conditioning, AC in the night, or maybe you just drank water before you went to bed? Yes, occasionally, and that's the truth. Excessive tea, coffee, alcohol, mm -hmm. cold environment mm -hmm. can make one pass. Mm -hmm. But then that's, you can find that condition. Okay. You know what you've done. But the person just keeps going, it's not cold, did not take coffee, and just goes five, six, seven times. Mm -hmm. It may suggest that something is wrong. Occasionally they may have leg swelling, and mm -hmm. at times swelling around the eyes on waking up in the morning. And as the day goes by, the swelling goes down. Usually, okay. when there is swelling around the eyes, the results as the day goes down, it's suggestive of kidney uh, problem. But as I said earlier, it's a stage disease. The stage one, two, three may not show much problems. But later on, by the time they get to stage four and stage five, that we call the oh. end stage. It's actually the stage five that is the end stage, yes. like okay. towards the terminal end. And that's when you see the patient requiring dialysis, needing a transplant, looking ill to the outside. Mm. Uh, to the public outside, hmm. but then it's 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 better to pick it earlier, or even better still to prevent it. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about um, mm -hmm. habits and things, how to prevent all of that. Let's go on a break, and then we come back to dwell on this. We have Dr. Falasha uh, showing her with us, a nephrologist, talking about uh, renal issues right here. But don't forget that top of the hour will be time for us to go for the news update, and Azizat will take us there. Stay with us on TBC Breakfast. Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. So we're discussing kidney failure or renal failure, if you depending on how you want to call it. And we have a nephrologist, a, a kidney specialist with us in the studio, Dr. Falashade Shoinka. Uh, we've been talking about this. Now, uh, Dr. Shoinka, let, let's, let, let me ask you this question we were throwing out earlier on when we were discussing. The issue of age. Mm -hmm. We used to think that any kind of organ failure has to do towards with the exactly end. towards you okay. know when you're getting a little. Our old. lifestyle has changed. She said mm -hmm. so earlier. Yeah. We're eating junk food, more salt, um, and then the incidence of hypertension and diabetes, which are the leading causes of uh, renal failure. Mm -hmm. It's even on the increase with us. Several years ago, you had fewer people with diabetes, fewer people with hypertension, but now we are seeing more people. And 
it has to do with our sedentary lifestyle, mm. obesity, salt, high salt intake. Unfortunately for us blacks, we are avid salt retainers. Something oh, in our yeah. gene takes in more salt, salt and retains it more than it ought to. Story in the past said, uh, we didn't have enough salt. Can you remember the slave trade? <laughs> and then something in our genes decided, once you say salt, take it, take it, take it. Mm. And salt is not particularly friendly for the kidney. And we're getting, to, we're getting to see it more. But I think one of the reasons also is that people are more enlightened. They don't mm. say you are swollen because a witch bewitched you mm. or you stepped in something and we are checking them. But really, really, is a lifestyle. There's a genetic component. There's mm -hmm. some ge genetic diseases like autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Oh, Big name. Uh, uh, plenty <laughs> cysts in the kidney that can okay. be passed from mother, father to children yes. and can cause kidney damage. People with sickle cell mm -hmm. can have kidney damage. Now HIV can have kidney damage. And then the one many of us forget is are the things we expose ourselves to over time. Drugs that are Dam uh, deleterious to the kidneys. Mm. Drugs we take in car parks, a lot of analgesic when we chronically abuse them, toning creams and skin that are absorbed in our skin over the years. Now I want you to underscore that one. Is it toning cream or bleaching cream? Toning and bleaching. Toning and bleaching. Yes. Okay. What's the difference? And toning, the skin, bleaching, what? semantics. And the, exactly. 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 Uh, exactly. And the skin is the largest organ in the body. Once that damages uh, other then organs, others are follow suit. So those are the chemicals work on the skin and have to be filtered by the kidney. There are chemicals the kidney ought not to deal with. Then mm. they get it on a continuous basis and over the years, chronically. Uh, and awesome. a country like Nigeria can only boast of one nephrologist to about one million people. Yes. That As I speak itself, about 160, 170. So if you read oh, that, so 170 about. million Nigerians. That's, that's, that's alarming. That's really so access serious. is a major really major issue. Most yeah. of the teaching hospitals do have do have nephrologists. Uh -huh. Access, yes, but cost. Cost. Okay. Because the care is really expensive. It's really expensive. Well, talk about that even more. How do we deal with that? Like like I said, you know, when we opened the show, uh, I discovered that the, the United States, for example, spends about thirty billion dollars every year on uh, helping uh, kidney patients. So where does a government like Nigeria start from? When we're looking, that's the exact amount we're looking for uh, to turn around this economy. We'll get there. Okay. Uh, but, but I know the nephrology body, a couple of years ago, was mm -hmm. trying to get a bill in such that the health care in terms of kidney care can be sponsored by the, uh, the government. But as I speak, some of the health insurances uh, have a program for the first three to five sessions of hemodialysis. Okay. If it's an acute problem, mm -hmm. an acute problem meaning that the kidney fails, in six weeks, three months, it's back to normal. That will suffice. If it's a chronic problem, three, five sessions is just enough for a week or two. Mm -hmm. okay. The person is back to pain uh, from birth. All right, mm -hmm. talk to us about uh, the... I have heard some people, not necessarily experts, who have said that if you take too much milk, it can cause a kidney stone and things like that. Th these, are, these are perception people have at the grassroots. What's the relationship between so much milk and kidney stone. Okay, kidney stone is actually not kidney failure. Okay, uh, okay. It's, it's a condition on its own. Okay. And if you list it, maybe number six, number seven, that can cause kidney failure mm. over time. And mm. um, some people that can't deal well with their calcium, they have a bit of an issue with kidney stone. So mm. when they take milk, you may say that, but it's not okay. a cause of kidney failure. All right, and well, of course we we do gather that um, dialysis or um, transplant are one of the two major ways of dealing with kidney disease. But we'll bring in uh, for La Delia at this point. Uh, let's find out what Nigerians know or think um, or are saying uh, about what are this, uh, this. What they are saying. I kept Fala. trying to peep because I didn't want to be left out of the conversation. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Fala Shade. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, um, you, we have malaria, we have diabetes, we have cancer, mm. we have so many things to deal with as Africans mm. and now we're hearing that renal failure is actually mm -hmm. one of those things yeah. that is, um, that is, you know, one of our, what, that we're prone to. Mm -hmm. Yes, added up to the bucket of challenges, yes. health challenges yes. around. Mm. So we don't have my slides right now, so I'll just, I'll just talk to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, I heard you talking people. about bleaching, because of course Mike was asking what's the difference between yeah, toning. toning and bleaching. <laughs> That's a conversation yeah, for another day. But is there a difference, really? <laughs> yeah, no. There is a difference, I'll, I'll okay. tell you after. <laughs> but um, so how does it work? I mean, I know you were talking about chemicals 
getting into the body, but how, what's the actual connection between renal failure and bleaching creams? Okay. Anything we're taking, once the body uses, even when it's food, the extra goes to the kidney for excretion. So when we have toxic components, things like mercury, other heavy metals that are quite plenty mm. in those tuning and bleaching the hydroquinones. hydroquinones, they get to be filtered by the kidneys. Some of them clog up and cause changes. And these are cream day and night, year in, year out. And then over the time, they can cause kidney problems. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 we have, we have you, my you, tweets now. No, you, but you have to stay with us. Yeah, okay. uh, stay with us. <laughs> I enjoy you being around, so stay with us. Oh. Yeah. Let, let's what go on a break. To say? No, no, no. It's good to have her stand with okay. us. That's, okay. that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> Jealous. Okay. We'll go on a break and then we come back to uh, have Fola Shadi. Uh, yeah, Fola, Fola on, uh, on, on my wall. On my wall. On my wall. Stay with us on TV Super. Right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. And on this segment, we've been talking about renal failure or kidney failure. And we've been looking at habits and what causes it and uh, how it can be managed and how it can even be prevented. We have with us a nephrologist or a kidney specialist, Dr. Falasha Desho Inka, joining us on the program this morning. But let, let's me, let me hand over to Fola standing on the another wall. Fola. Yeah, another yeah. Fola standing on the wall. Okay. So um, let's see what some people are saying online about this one and the questions they're asking. Belinda Otaz says, the number of pages raising funds for people with renal failure in Nigeria I see on social media is disturbing. Something is wrong, hashtag health. Mm. And someone replied to that. Ade Shufola says, at Belinda Otaz, I wonder how many cases are malaria related. My theory is that it is our failure to treat malaria properly that is responsible. I'll take you up on that mm. later, doctor. Next one from Mikhail Dias, who says, uh, lack of adequate safe drinking water is a leading cause of renal failure in Nigeria. Aradi Demba says, hashtag my bad doctor experience is watching a renal failure patient die due to lack of money to initiate dialysis. Mm. And the last one here from Sisubiso who says, diabetes and renal failure ain't no joke. Mm. Of course. Say certainly, that again. Certainly, certainly not. not. Certainly not. Okay, so safe drinking water malaria hmm. what's the connection safe drinking water no apart from maybe infection and the person has diarrhea yeah. and has maybe an acute kidney shutdown okay. um, okay. malaria yes there's a small entity called malaria nephropathy but i tell you if you rank 1 to 15 20 we are not yet there no. okay so it's not it's not really a common cause of chronic red off yeah. mm. Thank you for clearing that up because yeah. everyone tends to be a doctor online. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you were able to <laughs> fix that. Even up in there. the houses, everyone is doctor. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. of course, in you Nigeria, have, especially. You have headache and uh, No, but there's an infection the... that is worrisome, though. Okay. Which one? Um, we call it a big name, chronic rheumatoid Okay. Children pick it, sore throats, skin rashes. As the inflammation is going on in those organs, it catches on to the kidney. And over the years, and that's one of the reasons mm. younger people have it, call it CGN. Okay. Or short, they may develop hypertension and kidney problems. And now let's talk about the management. More and more Nigerians go abroad, especially India, yeah. to get transplant and all the rest. They, many of them come back and they still come down with the disease that eventually actually takes their lives. Uh, a number of artists that we have heard about. Now, why does the body reject some of these transplants? Okay. We can also do kidney transplants in Nigeria. There are about 12 to 15 centers. Where you can actually do kidney transplants? Many mm. times people go, um, some of them to wrong places, I must say. Some mm. of them not listening to what the doctors have said, not taking their medications right, returning to the bad lifestyle. So when we hear of uh, kidney graft failure, we think that's not a solution. Even in this country, I know a patient that was transplanted in the teaching hospital in Ife, about 14 years ago, she lives in Shagam, she's still fine. But I know quite a number of patients that have stopped medications, have gone back to mm. their lifestyle, or had one or two issues when it came to matching the kidney right at the beginning, and they didn't get that right. Mm. And many of them are The medications, right. are they for life? Well, before yes, I go, actually. in reducing doses. <laughs> okay. okay. No, but Ngozi talked about people going to India mm. and countries to, to get treatment. Is it that there's a problem with our system? I mean, you're in the system, so you're probably in the best Some people actually know our way. Mm -hmm. What I've just said, some people say, are you sure? Yeah, I'm, sure I'm they surprised can... to hear that yes. uh, there are... Mm -hmm. centers as as trans... ten, did you say 10 centers? About 12, 15. Actually... Okay. Uh, we'll yeah, be transplanting in Nigeria if, for about 15 years. If we years. have that much, before you travel abroad for a treatment, a doctor must be referring you. 
So, well, Fola, let me yeah, no, uh, allow you to okay, leave now. Before I'll you go. Or, or, or I'll bring a chair for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you, you, it's possible that any time anyone is traveling abroad for treatment, they, they would or should have been a referral. Mm -hmm. These doctors don't give them advice as, as to the fact that this you renal can actually... failure can be treated here, yeah. maybe in Meduguri or in Lagos or in Ilori, pardon, or in Makodi, as the case may be. We've mentioned almost everywhere. It's, it's, oh, 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 oh. So you're, you're good. <laughs> I was just mentioning We have in the Ife, we have Lagos, okay. we have Ibadan, Benin, Abuja, mm. Meduguri, yeah. and places mm. like that. Oh, for Meduguri, I knew because I schooled there, so okay. it's fine. Okay, so you know. Now, uh, speak to the issue of potassium in the blood, you know, that you talked about. Of course, that's gotten from um, salt. And the use of analgesics, ibuprofen, uh, aspirin, and the rest of them, and how there's a link to kidney failure because there's a part of the kidneys called the tumors and with time and continuous exposure to analgesic mm. they begin to get damaged and that's the reason for the kidney failure mm. especially when they are taken in combination I'm sure you've seen in our motor parks mm -hmm. people are not ill nothing is wrong just, and somebody just like a little cocktail mm. they just keep taking it what for some of them are even our native concussion mm. doses contents nobody knows duration of use on and on so those are the reasons we have a lot of tubular problems leading to kidney problems. Okay. Hmm. All right. Now let's give you some uh, information mm -hmm. here, adding up to what uh, Dr. Falashadi Shoinka is saying. Now, 10% of the world population is affected by chronic kidney disease, uh, that's CKD. And millions of people die annually because they do not have access to affordable treatment. And more than 2 million people worldwide go through dialysis or a kidney transplant to stay alive but of this figure most are treated in only five countries the united states japan germany brazil and italy now only 20 percent of those with kidney diseases are treated in about a hundred developing countries that make up about 50 percent of the world population who statistics reveal that uh, the death rate from intrinsic kidney and urinary tract disease was 1 million in the year 2002, ranking 12th on the list of major causes of deaths in Sub-Saharan Africa and indeed Nigeria. Let's do more available data for cases of renal failure in Nigeria. Now, during the World Kidney Day of 2016, experts warned of rising cases of kidney failure. They say about 17,000 new cases of kidney failure are diagnosed with only 2,000 having access to life uh, saving dialysis each year. Now this means many of those who have kidney disease die because they cannot access treatment centers uh, commonly located in the cities. Mm. Experts have said that uh, 36.8 million Nigerians wow. uh, are suffering from various stages of kidney diseases in Nigeria. Now Dr. Mm. Shoinka said earlier, earlier, when it gets to the last stages is where you see the obvious symptoms. Stage and one, two, three, are there but you may just ignore them doesn't that apply to most other diseases really it's mm -hmm. when they, uh, they get so bad really get mm -hmm. bad that nigerians you know that we think of going we'll start to running see the doctor. here and there now estimates therefore suggest that one out of every seven nigerians has one state of chronic disease or the other now although there are no hard statistics on prevalence the nephrology association of nigeria and nan uh, from a number of uh, studies conducted in some communities say the prevalence of kidney failure is between 17 and 21 percent of the population and now that's really high in nigeria only few treatment centers for dialysis exist uh, forcing many people to travel out for attention nigerians have been known to travel to countries like india and america for possible treatment spending so much money and contributing to the revenue of those countries mm -hmm. in 2012 when 38,000 visas were issued to nigerians 18,000 travelers wow. or traveled for medical treatment spending 240 million dollars or an average of 15 thousand dollars each on open heart surgery renal transplants brain surgery cancer and eye, eye eye treatment now the cost of an average kidney transplant in nigeria goes for about five million to six million naira and only few or very few can afford it like the report of the lady we had there mm. uh, she actually talked about some 20 it, 12, 12 million, 12 million mm. naira is what she needs now unlike some african countries like rwanda and south africa there is no government funding for treatment in nigeria 
the entire burden is treat, uh, of treatment is borne by individuals who most often can't bear the cost mm. for too long. Now, the ratio of uh, nephrologists in mm. Nigeria to patients stand at about uh, 150,000 to about 40 million patients, and that is grossly inadequate. Inadequate, totally. Very, uh, very inadequate. It's obvious that there might be a need for government to declare a state of emergency as far as kidney is concerned. Or kidney failure. <laughs> the hell it will be better. I yeah, but we have, we have every year, every year, there are people graduating from these courses. How come we still don't have enough? Not everybody is a kidney specialist. Okay. Mm. There are fewer people. And I tell you, it could be very discouraging when you have a patient, you know what to do right, but they can't afford it and they're left to die. Hmm. So it's, it's a real problem, isn't mm -hmm. it? Now let's even talk about the management of this disease for those who unfortunately find themselves battling with the condition, whether it's chronic or acute. How do you deal with those instances? And especially, don't even forget the caregiver. I mean, I have had the experience of being a caregiver uh, for someone for about a year. It's not funny. It's like life really stops. Yes, it is. Mm. Um, the truth is this, they need care. Mm -hmm. They need to be explained to because it's capital intensive. Mm -hmm. I've seen patients move from having two cars to walking on the road just because they're on renal care. Hmm. Okay. It's advisable for people that are at high risk, hypertensive, mm -hmm. diabetics, to get at least twice a year check. And I tell you, these tests are quite cheap. Okay. Uh, with between one to three thousand naira, can get a kidney care, a kidney check, and you know oh, this is okay. This needs some care here or there. The early stages, we use diet, we use drugs. Mm. But when it's towards the end, we may need to recourse to dialysis. Ideally, it's three times a week, four hour sessions. Well, our kidneys work all the time. You were shaking your head. Yeah. Our kidneys work 24 <laughs> 7 around the clock. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the, the dialysis process is actually like using an artificial kidney, an artificial filter mm. to do the work of the okay. native kidney. And that runs for about three to four hours per session. And the person keeps coming. Mm. Um, it's expensive, and I think the government has to really do something about mm. it because the average person cannot afford it.